Today we'll be talking about physical activity. Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Todd, Medical Director at Mercy Health. Physical activity, defined as anything that moves the body and uses energy. Physically active individuals have lower risks of major health conditions. Regular physical activity provides a variety of health benefits that allow people to feel and function better. The AHA recommendation for physical activity. At least 150 minutes of moderate activity each week for adults. 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Children need 60 minutes a day, every day. Or 75 minutes of vigorous activity. Or a combination of moderate and vigorous activity. And strength training at least twice a week. Let's talk about types of physical activity. You've heard about aerobic activity that gets your heart rate pumping. Strength and resistance training, that's weight training. Balance exercises and flexibility exercises. Ideally, all four types should be included into a healthy workout routine. Aerobic exercise. Sustained activity ranging from low to high intensity that stimulates the heart and breathing. Over time, the body becomes more efficient with how it uses oxygen, increasing heart and lung fitness. This strengthens the heart and other muscles and decreases cardiac stiffness. Mechanisms of aerobic exercise. Oxygen delivery. This increased amounts of oxygen are brought into the body when you breathe more during physical activity. Oxygen is processed by the lungs and transferred into the bloodstream. It is then carried by red blood cells to the heart and pumped to the working muscles and used to produce energy. Cardiovascular efficiency. Over time, regular exercises improve the strength of the heart. You'll have stronger contractions that pump more blood with every beat of the heart and lower blood pressure. The number of capillaries can increase, resulting in more blood vessels and more efficient gas exchange. Fat burning. Because fat is more dense than carbohydrate, it takes more oxygen to burn it. When more oxygen is delivered to the muscles through sustained activity, a higher percentage of fat is burned. When less oxygen is present, like during anaerobic exercises, example is weightlifting, a higher percentage of carbohydrates is burned. Both fuels are almost burned simultaneously, except during the most intense short-term burst of energy, like sprinting or weightlifting. It's the percentage of fat and carbohydrate burn that changes during a workout, depending on the intensity of the workout. Remember, the AHA recommendation is at least 150 minutes of moderate activity each week for adults. 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Moderate intensity aerobic exercise. You'll notice a slight increase in breathing and in heart rate. Usually, you're able to hold a conversation during this type of activity, and you should be perspiring. Exercises include brisk walking, leisurely cycling, leisure swimming, hiking, and dancing for fun. The AHA recommends 75 minutes of vigorous exercise each week for adults. Vigorous intensity aerobic exercise. This is when your heart rate increases significantly. Breathing is hard and fast, and it'd be almost impossible to hold a conversation. Examples include jogging, running, swimming laps, playing sports, fast-paced rollerblading, and even jumping rope. Gauging the intensity of your exercise. Physical activities may vary in intensity depending on the individual and their fitness level. Knowing your target heart rate will help you get the maximum benefit from your workout. This allows you to gauge if you're doing too much or not enough. For moderate exercise, you should work towards 50 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. For vigorous intensity, you should work towards 70 to 85% of your maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate can be calculated by starting with 220 and subtracting your age. Note the chart below. This chart will help you in target training zones, whether you want to lose weight or just maximize your workout. Important note though, some drugs and medications affect your heart rate, meaning you may have a lower maximum heart rate and target zone. If you have a heart condition or take medications, ask your provider what your heart rate should be. Let's talk about monitoring your heart rate. While you exercise, periodically check your heart rate. You can track heart rate easily by wearing an activity tracker or even on some exercise equipment. Or you can manually check it. Take your pulse on the inside of your wrist on the thumb side. 
Use the tips of your first two fingers, not your thumb though, and press lightly over the artery. Count your pulse for 15 seconds and multiply times four to find your beats per minute. And of course, know your numbers. If your heart rate is too high, you're straining and you should slow it, slow it down a bit. If your heart rate is too low, you may want to push yourself to exercise harder, especially when trying to lose weight. If you're just starting out, aim for the lower range of your target zone, maybe 50%, and gradually build it up, eventually to 85% of your maximum heart rate. Remember, the AHA recommends some sort of muscle strength exercise at least twice a week. Strength training that increases bone strength and muscular fitness. You should work all the major muscle groups of your body, your legs, your hips, your back, your chest, your abdomen, shoulders, and arms. This helps to develop stronger muscles, control weight, increase bone density, and reduce the risk of injury. As you gain more muscle, your metabolism rate increases, thus enabling the body to burn more calories more efficiently and lose weight. Balance exercise, my favorites. Any activity that improves balance, yoga, tai chi, resistance training. Having good balance is important for many activities that we do every day. Balance exercises can prevent falls and injury, and these can be performed as frequently as you like flexibility exercises, or stretching. These are exercises that stretch muscles and improve range of motion of joints. These exercises make other exercises easier and safer. Examples are yoga and Pilates. The best time to stretch is after exercise. At that point, muscles are warm so they can stretch farther without tightness or pain. Stretch slowly and smoothly, as far as, as is comfortable for you without pain. Hold positions for 10 to 30 seconds and repeat it three to five times. Pre-exercise is just as important as stretching. Don't forget to warm up. Warming up is critical to having a safe and efficient workout. It increases flexibility and prevents injury. A good rule of thumb is five to 10 minutes of warm up. The more intense of a workout, the longer your warm up should be. Warm up the entire body, not just your muscles you plan on using. Pre-exercise strategies. Properly fuel your body before physical activity. Hydrate with water, eat healthy carbs up to two hours before working out. Add some whole grains, yogurt, fruits, vegetables. These help maintain blood glucose concentration, which is valuable during exercise. Avoid saturated fats and healthy proteins. These fuels digest slower and take away oxygen from your muscles. And during exercise, hydrate. Take small, frequent sips of water to balance fluid loss. And mix up your workouts. Variety not only keeps workout routines more exciting, but prevents stress on isolated muscle groups. If strength training, modify workouts weekly. Post-exercise strategies. Recover quicker with a cool down. This helps avoid dizziness, reduce lactic acid buildup in your muscles, and makes for an easier recovery. Gradually reduce your heart rate. Examples are walking for about five minutes after your exercise. This brings your heart rate down slower. Stretch, it's the best time to stretch while your muscles are still warm. And of course, after exercise, refuel your body. Drink plenty of water, eat lean protein and healthy carbs. These are foods rich in protein that help repair and grow muscles. What are some of the benefits of physical activity? Well, it's a natural mood lifter. It relieves stress, anxiety, depression, and anger. Most people notice an improvement in mood shortly after they make physical activity a regular part of their, their routine. We know that staying active is one of the best ways to keep our bodies healthy but it can also improve your overall well-being and quality of life. Physical activity also keeps you physically fit and able. Without regular exercise, the body slowly loses its strength, its stamina, and ability to function properly. Exercise increases muscle strength, which in turn increases your ability to perform other physical activities. Here are some other reasons to be physically active. It lowers blood pressure. It helps reduce blood sugar. It boosts good cholesterol levels. That's the HDL. It improves blood flow and circulation. It keeps weight under control. And it prevents bone loss. 
all result in lowering the risk of heart disease, stroke, hypertension, diabetes, osteoporosis, and even depression. Too much sedentary activity can increase your risk for heart disease and stroke. According to a study, adults who watch more than four hours of TV a day had an 80% higher risk of death from cardiovascular disease. Additional benefits of physical activity. It can help you live longer. People who are physically active and have a healthy weight live about seven years longer than those who live a sedentary lifestyle and are obese. Generally, those extra years are healthy years. Staying active helps delay or prevent chronic disease and diseases. And if that weren't enough, there are additional benefits. It helps you quit smoking and stay tobacco free. It helps you fall asleep faster and more soundly. It boosts your energy levels through the day. It improves mental and emotional well-being, promotes a positive attitude and outlook, and provides fun ways to spend time with your friends and family, and helps you spend more time outside and in the community. Let's make it a goal of making physical activity a regular part of your life. 80% of Americans don't get the recommended amount of exercise and may say they don't like it. Find something you really enjoy. Give it time to become part of your routine and mix it up to prevent loss of interest. Just don't give up. Here's some tips. Don't do it alone. Exercise is often easier when it's, shared, it's a shared activity with a friend or family member. More accountability, more motivation, more bonding and fun. Fitness classes are a great example. Community walks and runs, running clubs, group hikes, etc. And finally, pace yourself. Pace yourself when you're starting off. Start slow and go easy. Gradually amp up your intensity and duration. Remember the big picture. Keep in mind all of the health benefits scientifically shown to result from exercise. They're all good.